Welcome back to Celtic Fans TV. It's time for the post-match pint after Celtic 2, AIK now. We're here, back in the Grenathane for this one. I'm joined by Ryan and by Scott. Scott, we'll start with you tonight. Much more comfortable night than we've seen in Europe last week. What did you think of the performance? Very comfortable. Um, I was looking for a bit of confidence tonight. Obviously, there's been a lot of uh, talk about transfers, about previous results, about management, about board. Um, it was good to see the players not really uh, having that in their mind tonight. So they were confident and uh, especially I was most impressed between the first 15 minutes and 25 minutes. I don't know if you noticed, but the football we were playing was unbelievable. Weren't really making as clear cut chances as, as what we usually would have, but the passing was unbelievable. Every time we get the ball, there was somebody else open and the AIK just couldn't really keep up with us. So it's a brilliant spot of 10 minutes there. Edward is just class. Mm. He's just elegant. That free kick with inside his foot, um, his hold up play again has come on it's tons super, this year. Absolutely. Tons. Super. And that's what was lacking last year. So, um, a lot of good signs. Uh, they're a decent team. They set up okay. They seem to allow us to have the ball quite mm -hmm. a lot. Uh, and that seemed to suit us. So, maybe they'll change it up next week. But um, I think we've got enough to, to take us through. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Ryan, as Scott said. We did have a good spell in the first half, but I thought we struggled to build the game in the first 10-15 minutes. I thought, as again, Scott says, AIK were happy to let us have the ball without any real pressure. Maybe once we got over the halfway line, they were looking to put a wee bit of pressure on us. But I thought we kind of struggled to, to string any attacks in the first 10-15 minutes. But then we went on to have that 10-minute spell where we were knocking about brilliantly and we were linking up Christy, Edward, we were getting the ball wide. We created a couple of chances again without uh, no glaring chances really, but after that uh, first 10 15 minutes, we did start to play. We've got we are fortunate in that we have a couple of players who, when they're on our game, we can really move that ball a bit elegantly well. We can link up uh, Christie and Edward when they're on our game, are something to behold, like the link up play they've got between them. And that we spell in the first half, I said to you, when the first 15 minutes, I thought we just looked a wee bit mm, no at it. And I think it maybe was just that we like, let's settle into the game and find our feet. When we did find our feet, we played some attractive football. We just didn't find that end product in the first half. When we came out in the second half, I think we looked a wee bit more aggressive in yeah. the final third. I think we looked like we were trying to make it happen, and we did. I think. I'm going to probably go against what you said there, Scott, because I don't think they're a very good team at all. I think they look poor. I think they look like we but should probably, on our day, we should have taken three or four goals in for terms, them. In terms of an attacking threat, I think they were Really poor. Absent. Like, not there. Aye, not there. And I think even defensively, they were, they were resolute, but I don't think they were a great outfit on mm. the whole. I think they're a team that... <laughs> looking back to last week, I think they're a team that are not at the same sort of level as Cluj. They're not at the same sort of level as you would get in the playoffs and at the Champions League group stages. They're a definite step below that. And I think that as a team that on our day, a couple of weeks back, we would probably put three or four past them comfortably today. But good result, and we move into the tie next week. We'll probably see a truer representation of what they are as a team at home for them. In the second leg next week, we know when you go away in Europe, particularly for Celtic, we can we can sometimes struggle. But on tonight, Scott, we came out in the second half. Again, like we've seen last week against Cluj, up to tempo, got the chances, and, and James Forrest opens the scoring. Five goals in five games for James Forrest. Nothing phases that man. Nothing phases that <laughs> um, man, honestly. And really starting to get hit a, hit a bit of form now again. No, he's... He's, um, he's come on to brilliant form and he's a man that sometimes there's periods of the game where you don't really see him much or he's not delivering balls in or he's not beating his man and you can almost forget he's in a part for maybe 10, 15 minutes here and there and then it comes up with a goal. Mm. So that's just, it's again, it's a bit of a sign of class and uh, I, was kinda, I wasn't slating him but I'd mentioned a few times in pre-season we're not really seeing much with Jamesy, what's going on with Jamesy. Um, just because you expect a lot from him. Mm. Um, After last season. Aye, yeah. aye, you expect a lot from him and we're seeing it. So he's on track to beat his goal tally from last year and he digs us out at the exact moment that we need it, mm. like at the weekend and like today. We really need a goal to get us going and, and he was there. Absolutely. 
Ryan, that's, as I say, five and five for Forrest. Again, massively important player for us. There's sometimes a curse when when guys win Player of the Year award. They, they just seem to, their form just disappears the, the, the following season. But um, he is coming on a bit of game now, and like you say, coming up with important goals, important times. Massively, and again, goals bring confidence, breed confidence, and give players a bit of, just a bit of belief in their ability to finish the ball. And, just the power he put behind that shot, the keeper couldn't keep it out of the net. Mm. And uh, really, really well struck. Yeah. Uh, a number of times he's gone down, and again, for pace, nobody will really beat him mm. to that byline. And he's always there or thereabouts for putting a ball into the box. And it just seems to be that he's coming in a nice vein of form. And to see him continue his goal scoring, because that is something we do need again, that spread of goals. And him in the score sheet, five out of five, is you can't grumble, can you? Aye, absolutely. Just quickly in the goal. Keeper gets a good hand to it, maybe in two hands to it. Um, but an error, not to keep out on it. It's no great, it's no great. Um, obviously, I was a goalkeeper. You've got to. You've not said that before. Uh, I, I have <laughs> said that before, but the video never worked. Last week, but the video never got there. I had some brilliant commentary and goalkeeper, <laughs> and, and it got ditched. So, um, no, no brilliant for the goalkeeper, but obviously, you've got to give give James the credit. The goalkeeper's only young, he's only 22. Is but he had some brilliant saves, a triple save mm. um, in the second half. Uh, I thought he looked good, his distribution was, was poor. But aye, uh, no great goal to lose for him, but we're not caring. Get it up and he's a wide on the first half and Mikey Johnson aye, then. Do you think that he actually went down but and was trying to get a foul? I don't know. He, he's, he's, I was obviously watching the game the telly. His he's, uh, ankle did get trapped under him and I thought maybe he's actually just hurt his ankle and went down. Really? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, um, we we did eventually get a second goal. It was Edward asked in the full time reaction about him. Scott's touched on him already, time and time again at this level and in these games, he just brings his absolute best. Mister Reliable for the big games, isn't he? He's always the man that you can look to to bring something to the big games, to bring something to the big stage, and he is a player that should be playing at the very highest level. When you look at him tonight. His first touch is absolutely sublime. Incredible. He can take a it's ball incredible. at the air like it wasn't even dropping. And just the way that he dispatches that free kick, the keeper, not a chance. Like, phenomenal. Mm. The, the ability, he just seems to have everything. He just seems to have everything in his game. Mm. Just He's got that ability to put away the free kick. He's got that ability to take the ball coming across him, finish it off. And it's always like that. It's got to say the elegance, right? He's nonchalant. Like even with that, the dispatching of that free kick, he's never powered his precision, and he's got that ability just to find the corner, the right next to the post every single time, and he's just like it's an absolute joy to watch. Mm. He's a joy to watch. Scott, another thing, he's, he links the game so well as we've touched on. His first touch is brilliant, but that free kick is actually suited for a left footer. We were talking, boys, it's the next day, we were saying, Christy, probably Christy's going to hit it. It's the side for the left foot, I think he puts it at the goalkeeper side as well. But it's round the wall, and it, it, it curls, it's almost not going in until the last minute, and it's just mm -hmm. sublime. That was brilliant. Obviously, the goalkeeper's unsighted for the first kind of 10 yards, and that's enough for, for the power to just take it by him. And, and uh, with that level of precision, and the power that he gets on it, and you know how hard it is to get that amount of power with it inside of your foot. So... Um, a brilliant free kick, and as soon as that, as soon as we got that free kick, I think um, AIK were bringing on a, a player or two. Mm. Uh, I think we might have been as well, and my dad was screaming out for Griffiths to come on, right? Mm. Because we obviously know how good he is. But it's brilliant to see somebody else being able to step up and score a free kick for that for that range, because it's very dangerous to have somebody like that. So brilliant for the big man. Definitely, and as I said in the Twitter reaction, he's got everything, and, and he's shown it time and time again. And the only worry for us is if he shows it. In these European games, yes, he wants to be playing in the Champions League. That's probably what he's promised coming to coming to Celtic. But if he keeps showing it, even in the Europa League, that's where he, he puts himself on a platform, and and teams teams will see him. Unfortunately, um, and if he keeps that up, he's probably the next one out the door. Moving on, though, the other thing I think was very noticeable tonight. Obviously, Ball and Goal he played at left back. Julian started again as well. How did you think they looked tonight? Do you think we did look more defensively stable? I know we had maybe one or two slightly ropey moments and AIK didn't offer a lot in attack, but did you think we did look a, a little bit more sturdy? I think just in the fact that the guys are playing in the positions that they're meant to play in, that they've learnt their trade in. Who would have thought it? 
Exactly. So we had a left back at left back, not a central midfielder. So in that sense, yes, probably more sturdy. I think ball and goalie still looks a wee bit harsh sometimes. He's just a heavy touch in the ball and he can let somebody in a bit erratic. I think Julian still can look a wee bit wobbly. Probably had a decent performance better tonight, but again, go. better, but still very rarely tested. They didn't offer much in going forward. And I think against Clues last week, we might have seen a bit a better test for them, a more stern test. But still, to have a left-back playing at left-back would have been probably the order of the day, right? Mm, absolutely. And we'll never know a touch on that to our reaction. We'll never know how last week... We might have been playing Slavia Prague on Tuesday if we'd have played a left-back at left-back last week. Probably. Probably. But... Uh, how did you think Julian done? How do you think Bolingoli done? Obviously, we've talked a lot about Bolingoli, and, and Julian's obviously looked a little bit shaky. But as I said to Ryan there, I thought he was a bit better tonight. I thought he was. I thought by all accounts he was good. I think they both look comfortable tonight. Um, Bolly's re ball retention still isn't really where you'd want it to be, mm. but it's nowhere. I think maybe it's just that AIK didn't really punish the times that we lost the ball in, in their in their defensive third. Yeah. So um, that's just something that needs to brush up on. But again, that might just be a bit of confidence um, or a bit of understanding where people are going to be because sometimes I feel like he's trying to pass the ball through people. Um, so he, he looked a lot better. Um, well, a couple of wee kind of blemishes here and there. Julian, I thought looked a lot better. In the air, I feel that even if we're attacking, if we've got a corner for ourselves or if we're defending a corner, he's getting himself on the ball. Mm. I mean, he's getting his head to it first. And we're starting to see what we've been told about Julian, that he's brilliant in there. Yeah. I think that I can start seeing glimpses of that now. And it does seem more comfortable. Um, and that's it's going to take that. It's going mm. to take that for a centre-back to come in and start to feel comfortable, especially when you kind of get a few Europa games and some fans have written you off, do you know what I mean? Mm. Um, there's a lot of pressure on the guy as a big signing. So, um, I no, I'm happy with what I've seen tonight. Yeah, I think that that really irritates me, and I think I touched on it with, with Ball and Goalie becoming a bit of a scapegoat already. These guys are just in the door, and I know we've paid big money for them, particularly in Julian's case. But there is a bit of adjustment to be done, and they need time. Like I feel like in this in this age that we're so quick to judge, it's like binary. It's like one and zero. Guys have played two games; they're either absolutely written off, or they're brilliant. And, and there's there's somewhere in between there and particularly in Julian's case I think he does need time like they are coming to a different league, a different club, a different culture and and with time with time we can only judge them but hopefully with time they develop into the, the players that we thought we invested in 100% I remember Henry Larson putting Chick Charlie through in his <laughs> debut right? so that a bit older right? I remember watching that game live and he put him through in his debut and that is just like He's the best player that's played at Celtic Park in the last 20 years by a country mile. So when you think of that, like we have to give these guys a wee bit of time to bed into the squad, especially defensive players, because defence has to be a solid unit. And you're not going to be a solid unit in the first couple of probably months mm -hmm. until you start to learn who's playing round about you, you know, positionally where you're meant to be when the ball's moving, um, the attacks. And just, I think we need to give them time to bed in to the squad. Yes, they're. <laughs> There's always going to be, the players that come to Scotland will not be the level of player that could play at the highest level. Because if they were, then they'd be yeah. going to the highest level. So we have to give them the time to come in here and and grow as a player. Mm -hmm. to the Again, the demands of playing at Celtic Park are massive because we expect that they win week mm -hmm. in, week out. We expect they don't make mistakes. We, we expect that expectations for the crowd are massive. So that has to have a certain element of kind of nerves running through mm -hmm. the players when yeah. they step onto the park for the first couple of months. Never yeah. mind bedding in a back line and trying to become the player that they want mm -hmm. to be. So I we have to give them a bit of time. That's where, sorry, the defence is just where the communication and the relationships between each other are so important. You need to get to know each other. You need to get to to know how each other play and adapt to, to how the team wants to defend and that's something that only come with time, sorry. What you no, mean? definitely, like what you're saying is we kind of sign dead set players, 15, 25, 30 Finished minutes, centre backs, so. abs absolutely, we're signing potential in the same way that we signed Edward and think about a year ago, if he was on his back mm -hmm. because he was too lazy, wasn't chasing down balls, wasn't caring, but 
now that, that his touch is better and his hold-up play is better and he's scoring more goals, we're saying he's nonchalant, he's elegant. So so those things that we used to call negatives we're now calling positive just because the guy's slowly realising his potential. But a lot of people's mentality, a lot of players' mentality isn't strong enough to, to block out that noise of they're writing me off, like why am I not getting time? And, and you start to kind of grow maybe a bit distant from from um, from the club and team because you feel like you're you're been left by the wayside. But obviously Edwards had the mental strength to come through that. But let's not put pressure on these guys early on um, when they are just trying to realise their potential and settle in somewhere. When you look just touching there, right? When you look at somebody like Benkovic come in last season and instantly hit the ground looking like a top player, that is a difference. Mm -hmm. Seven million, yeah. thirteen million, uh, Scottish Premiership. EPL, the English Premier League, mm -hmm. that's the difference. Like we just kind of attract a Benkovic to the team, or would we pay him to bring him in? So I, hundred percent. Yeah, I want to. I want to touch on the squad now. Obviously, Champions League is gone. That horse is bolted long ago. We still need to fix the squad. Fraser Foster was unveiled at half time. Obviously, that's that's a goalkeeper. <laughs> that that's in terms of priority list. Goalkeeper is probably third or fourth down. We've got 10, 11 days, say 11 days, left. How many do we need? What positions do we need them in? And are we going to get them? I'm just wondering if Gary Hooper... Uh, Joe Ledley. So <laughs> it's, it's crazy, right? How many old faces have we brought back in the last 18 months? It's crazy. However, it is a keeper. It is a face. The board want to show his faces, unveil faces. I feel like it's more for the sake of bringing a player in as opposed to what we actually need right now. And I don't know. And I just Only feel, one. so I feel, again, and you said that, if you put the three of the now keepers that we have at the club together, you can make a phenomenal goalkeeper, but they all have strengths and weaknesses. We could do another set of hands. Connor Hazard probably isn't ready to step into the first team. He's always in the peripheries just as that third keeper. Mm -hmm. So having him is a good thing. We have to add to the team are we going to? I'm not certain. We're hearing the day the Gumney stuff. I don't think that's. I think that's a bit kind of flipping. There was people starting to put rumours out there that isn't actually concrete. Agreed, but Aye, and I, it just looks like it's maybe no there. Time will tell. But what's happened before, and uh, there was a cracking post about the players that we've signed in the last kind of ten days of the window or whatever, in the last however many seasons, and if you look at them. They're pretty much no hopers, and it's just names for name's sake, and that's what you deal with when you wait this long to do any of your business. That is the reality of it. There's been there's a couple there's a couple in there. Yeah, I think Edward came in in the last day of the window, and there's there's a few exceptions to that, but almost exceptions that prove the rule. We need a right back. We've seen that again tonight. Chris Fryer playing out of position. Okay, he can deputise there, fine, but at the end of the day, it's not good enough to have El Ahmed there, and then if he gets injured, we need to shift one of the best defenders at the club out of position to cope with that. We need a right back, we need a left back. We've been looking for a number eight for the whole transfer window. We haven't got one. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, David Turnbull, pretty exceptional circumstances, but yeah. we've, had, we've had another two, best part of two months to get one. We haven't got one. I would argue we need a defensive midfielder because if Scott Brown isn't there, which we should be managing him out of the team, we've talked about that a lot. I still think we need somebody in there. McGregor can play there technically. He's brilliant at playing deeper and we know he can do that, but there's other qualities there, like almost destroyer qualities, almost like Victor Wanyama qualities. And um, we're not bringing him back because he's a bit club bruise, not that we want to go back to 2012. But there's the, the, the holes in the squad have been there for months, and we've had two months, three months to address them, and we haven't done yeah. it. And now we've got 11 days to do it. Panic um, bag. I know. We're running out of time, um, and I think most transfer windows close in the last three years, and we're kind of slightly let down. But this one started well. Slightly. This this one started well, and it's it's kind of tailing That's off. That's all we're getting. It's tailing off. So, well, all I can really say is we'll see what happens. Um, we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. And the, the thing is, one of the best guys we've bought in this window has been Hatem at right back, right? One of the cheapest guys. So just because somebody's I know Hope or is low down the list in terms of who we want to sign or, or maybe isn't six or seven million pound. Doesn't mean that they're not going to be as good because sometimes the cheaper signings work out for us. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That that is true. And another another thing I want to touch on 
that, that again, it, it agitates me so much is that when we're linked with players, sometimes it's, it's either um, we've been linked with a player recently and everybody's like, oh, brilliant, I would have him. And then half the other people are like, it's, it's um, Burger Mellon from uh, Rosenberg, right? Yeah. So for a while, there was people who, who said, oh, that boy's been really good when, he's, when we've seen him playing against us for Rosenberg. Linked to us for a while and then there's a wee bit of hype round about him and then it's, it switches and people are like, didn't James Forrest have man of the match performances against him and run rings on about him? So then you've got half the people saying, this boy's brilliant, bring him in. And half the people saying, he's shite, James Forrest ran, ran rings on about him. Mm. And he, we've not even signed him yet. I know. <laughs> Some people it's, just want to have a it's, complaint. It's, but it's baffling. It's absolutely baffling. So, aye, we can, and that's just what I've touched on with Julian and Ball and Goalie. We can't judge players too quick. But at the end of the day, we need to get players in and we need to get the right quality in. We haven't done it so far. And the, the as I say, the champion, it's too late for the Champions League. We've got a job to finish the second leg, which we'll come on to briefly uh, right now. But we've got to we've got to get the, the right quality in because we we've got a fight on this season. We have got a fight on, and if you don't think we've got a fight on, you are naive in the extreme, massively. And when you look at right, we are now edging ever closer to that door slamming shut again and egg in our face again because we've not addressed the glaring glaring weaknesses in the squad when you've got a player like Ayer playing out at right back when you're, your right back's gone that you've just signed someone else needs brought in left back if Bolly's not the man we need someone else behind him or someone who can move in in front of him we've got holes needing filled and no one is prepared to do the business to fill them and I fear that that is going to be the case up until the last minute and we'll bring in somebody loan for, deals. Yeah, uh, emergency loans loan crazy deals, loan yeah. deals where we've seen loan deals come and go Mosonda was one of the names that was brought in, in the last couple of days of the transfer window mm -hmm. who never turn up to anything and that, that is a problem that needs addressed and we paper over the cracks again and they be getting a win and like, the cracks are always there and they'll always bubble under the surface until the shit hits the fan. And when the shit hits the fan, it's going to come crashing down. But let's take the positives for tonight. We've got a result. We've still got days to finish the transfer window and bring in what we need. Whether we do or not, it's to be seen. Absolutely. Hearts on Sunday, second leg AIK next week, and then Ibrooks. So the big games are there, and, and we've got to deal with them. Because whether we bring players in or not, the players we bring in are only going to be ready for those games. So... We're, we're, we're going with what we've got. Mm -hmm. Scott, second leg next week. Quickly, briefly, will we finish it, the job? I think we so. I think we're definitely going to score against them. Um, they didn't look much of a goal threat, so obviously we're going to get a goal, meaning they need, what, four? Mm -hmm. So I think it's over the line if we get that goal, like I think we will. Absolutely, right. next week. A way goal and the tie's done for me. Absolutely, that will do us for tonight. Like the video, comment your own thoughts below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. We're almost over 18,000, which is quite incredible, really, because I think there must be like seven or eight days between 17,000 and 18,000 if we can get there in the next 48 hours or so. So if you watch every week and you haven't subscribed, please don't forget to click the red button below and we'll see you on Friday for the Start 11 prediction for the Hearts game. Thank you. <laughs>